All right, well, welcome to the shop, everyone. On this part here, I'm going to go through at least what I do when I pre-lube an engine. And just so everybody knows, I already have pre-lubed this engine. But I'm going to go kind of back through some of the things I do. Uh, when, when I do it, things I look for and things that I do to make sure I, I feel like it's adequate. A lot of times, like the oil filter, if you don't have that filled up, you know, when you first put the uh, prime tool in the distributor hole, uh, you'll run it for a little bit and uh, you'll feel it when the uh, oil filter fills up and then you'll feel the drill start to load. And then you just run it for a while and I kind of look the rocker arms and see if the oil's filling up in the rocker arms. And I also like to rotate the crankshaft while I'm doing that. So, you know, a few things I'm looking for is, you know, oil coming up through all the lifters. And you'll hear like, you know, air bubble, bubbles and pockets kind of coming up through. And then the reason I like to rotate the crank is not, not all motors have fully grooved bearings for the mains. Not all motors are cross drilled uh, on the crankshaft. So sometimes the rod bearings, they don't get oiled uh, 360 degrees. They only get oiled 180 degrees. Now there's motors that do do that, but this one here is not that way. So let me show you right quick what I'm talking about. So, well, okay, so I have this crankshaft set up here and these are the type bearings that was put in that motor. And so you'll notice like the upper, the upper part, and on the bearing, it'll actually say upper. So you can, I don't know if I can zoom it in, but anyways. So anyways, you see the groove there? And as that oil comes out and hits the crankshaft, it goes across, it goes across. Now that's the bottom of the, the bearing where the uh, caps are. Same way with the, the rear main bearing. It's you know, 180 degrees grooved. Now on some of these crankshafts, on the mains anyways, some of them come from the factory cross drill. That means it's drilled all the way through and comes out the other side. So every time they go through, they're actually being oiled the, the full amount of time. And this one is not cross drilled. And so if I take a, 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 a TIG rod and I pass it through, you can see where it's coming out, coming out to the rod bearing. All right, so the oil goes through that hole and is forced through to the rod bearing. And so all of them go that way to where this one, you can see, comes out there. So anyways, if I were just to pre-lube it and I left the crank static and didn't turn it, uh, if these holes aren't lined up with the groove, whatever bearings, rod bearings they were feeding wouldn't get any oil. And so that's the way, at least on this motor, I like to rotate it while I'm priming it. So anyways, just want to explain that a little bit. All right, so let's get back over there. All right, so we're back at the engine. We got the old prime tool. Gonna hook it up to a drill. Now, we made this on one of the videos. If you guys wanna go back and take a look at how we did that, but I'm just gonna hook it up to a drill and stick it down in there. And uh, so as you can see, it spins the end. And with the teeth machined off of that, it doesn't engage the, the, you know, the camshaft. So you can spin it and then, you know, there's actually uh, there's some oil passages in there that this actually here, I believe, has to plug off. Otherwise, it won't build pressure. So you can't just stick a rod down in there and do the same thing. These things actually capture some of the oil and keep it from leaking out. All right, so let's stick it in there. So we got almost, what is it, close to 75, let's see what we got, probably about 70 pounds of uh, 
oil pressure. Cut it off a second. See it drop back. All right, so also I'm seeing the oil start to build up in the rocker arms. I'm gonna go ahead and put you on a tripod so I can rotate the engine while I'm doing that. So, and you see rocker arms are all full of oil, dripping off down there. Don't hear any more uh, air pockets popping in there. I've rotated the engine around as uh, we were priming it with a primer there. And so anyways, uh, yeah, I had pre-primed it prior to this I was just kind of going back over what I do and uh, that part of it's done so next thing we'll do is put the valve covers back on uh, get the distributor in there and then I'll probably show you a way that I I set the timing before I started up to where you shouldn't be getting a lot of backfires through the carburetor and stuff the way I do it but Actually, uh, when I was a, a kid growing up, I actually grew up on a island uh, down on, it's called Fort Myers Beach. And the, uh, my father had a, a laundry mat and a car wash. And uh, we had this automatic car wash that would go over the cars. And uh, you know, the automatic car wash would miss spots. And so you always went around with a brush and hit the spots that the automatic brushes on the car wash would, would miss. And there's this old, I don't know what year Trans Am it was, probably a 74, three, ah, probably 74, if I'm guessing right. But uh, it, didn't, it didn't have a Pontiac motor anymore. It actually had a, a big block Chevy engine in it. And I guess the wheel well, covers were taken out because when I go around the front wheel wells with the brush and the car wash I would see the engine in there and it had these like black looking valve covers pretty close to what I got that's that's what I remember the yellow plug wires the headers and that's what I could see when I was washing the car and uh and I don't know, I, I guess that stuff has always stuck with me. Uh, so this is kind of, uh, you know, engine kind of mimicked, you know, kind of look, look older, you know, the old, old older school 70s type of stuff with a little bit more modern heads and stuff like that. But yeah, that's, that's where the idea came for the look is that old, that old Trans Am that somebody had a, and I think it was a, I remember right I think it was a 427 big block that was in that car if I, if I remember right but uh anyways yeah I always remember looking at that Trans Am when it come in get a wash and scrubbing around those front wheel wells looking there seeing that motor and she was hitting a good lick and uh I guess that's maybe some of the stuff that kind of influenced me a little bit on like hot rods and things like that. Uh, it's kind of neat how things of a past or when you're a kid or you know things that impact you uh, when you're younger. And uh, I always remember that car, you know, I remember that. And I actually did at one time have me a 75 Trans Am, but I never had the, uh, you know, a, a big block Chevy in it. Uh, but how the things that kind of impress you, and then you, you kind of mirror that stuff back through your life. So anyways, that's, uh, 
kind of the look of the engine, where, where the look of the engine came from, was my memory as a younger guy, uh, working at my dad's car wash on an island, Fort Myers Beach, just got hit by a hurricane not too long ago. The uh, house I grew up in down there uh, actually got lifted off the lot and floated, floated back. And then the uh, laundry itself that used to be there is actually, I think they tore it down now. So pretty much all I remember down there is gone. But anyways, that's the kind of the story of the valve cover look and the uh, yellow spark plug wires and where I remember that at. All right, getting these old valve covers on there. Now the, these gaskets and stuff, I hadn't put any kind of sealer on them as far as like the seal them up good on the valve cover yet. So maybe after I start it, you know, they might drip a little bit, I'm not sure. We'll see. Now the all important spark plug wires. <laughs> I know, uh, you know, seeing that motor with the yellow XL, I think they're XL, they're yellow, I know that much. Uh, spark plug wires. Uh, even my little mini bikes. Uh, if I can find an old yellow spark plug wire somewhere, and I have no idea even where I would get that at. Where, where would I find a yellow spark plug wire, but some, somehow I would and could. And on my mini bikes, that's one thing that I had to have is that little yellow spark plug wire sticking up out of the, the cover of that uh, thing. Make it a racing mini bike, I guess. <laughs> now I'm not gonna plug these things in yet the spark plugs I'm gonna leave everything out and I'm gonna hang the spark plugs on them and make sure they're grounded to the headers because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the ignition on and then I'm gonna get my timing light I'm gonna go ahead and hook it up to number one plug wire and then just spin it over and, and watch on the harmonic balancer where it's flashing and then I'll set the time until I don't know probably 10 degrees before top dead center, something like that. And it ought to start up on that pretty good, I would think. But I I do that before I put any gas. So no gas is in the carburetor, haven't turned the pump on. And so when I spin it over, you know, it won't be sucking any fuel in and it's, it's safe that way. Just a way to get some initial timing in there where you don't have a backfiring and stuff because sometimes you can't get it just right. And the reason I do like having a spark plug on there is so it can discharge. And you gotta have it, I gotta have the spark plug, you know, laying on some kind of a metal surface where it can uh, discharge to the spark because uh, it's not real good, you know, to, yeah, that spark energy, <laughs> I don't know. I guess you can look at it like a pipe with water and uh, you know, real high pressure water it would seek a way out. And the same way with like electrical is, uh, you know, if the electrical can't discharge, you know, something, it wants to discharge to a ground and when you don't provide a path, you know, it's, it's looking for the, the weakest non-insulated spot. And so it's just better to have them laying where they can discharge and to weaken the insulation in any way. All right, so I got them all kind of laid up where they can 
discharge somewhere. And that's the one we'll go ahead and hook the timing light up to. Well, the timing light's all, all hooked up. Got it to my little 12 volt lugs I put on there. Number one spark plug, see over there. Got the power turned on, uh, arm the ignition. And since we don't have any gas in the engine and the plugs are out, it'll spin over easier because the plugs are out so it shouldn't have any compression. And uh, I'll set the thing on a tripod and try to show how how it flashes and then I can preset the timing a little bit. So let me get you on the tripod. All right, so let's turn the power on. That right, gives us our gauges. Go ahead and arm the ignition. Uh, I'll go ahead and spin it over, see if we just got oil pressure. Keep the ignition off for that, don't need that. So. Got about 50 pounds just spinning it over. All right, so now I'm gonna arm the ignition. I'm gonna set you on a tripod, and we're gonna go for about I don't know 10 before top dead center. What we're shooting for? So get you on a tripod. All right, so that's just about on top dead center right there. it up a little bit see what that does for us that's about five before top of the center which that might work That's about nine before top dead center, which you know I'm I'm a I'm just gonna go with that. Call that good enough. Well, all the spark plug wires and spark plugs are installed now. Got all that on there. So as far as priming the engine and timing the engine, uh, that part's done. So all the plugs are in there. Uh, I'm not gonna start it up, but let's see how it spins over. With a little bit of compression on it. Uh, just gonna... All right, so seems like it'll spin it good enough to fire it up. So I guess the next video will be is hearing this thing run finally. Hey, thanks for watching. See you on the next video.